And I uh, want to welcome everybody to Black Blockchain Consultants. My name is Cherie Warwick, and I am the leader of the organization. I want to welcome my panelists here tonight, uh, Ron Clement, who is working feverishly on our Center for Blockchain Studies, along with Dr. Keisha, whom I hope comes later on if she's not at uh, one of her startup Detroit meetings. Um, and then we have a special guest here, Mr. Eric Guthrie, who is a member of, or I guess one of the officers of the Government Blockchain Association, um, who's going to talk about what GBA is doing as well as some other things that he's doing within the blockchain space. Oh, and Dr. Keisha is here. Do you want to be on, Dr. Keisha? If so, I will, uh, I will uh, promote you to a panelist. Yeah. So just let me know. Okay. All right. So give me a second. Um, sorry, everybody. We'll, we'll uh, be ready in a second here. Oh, maybe she's under doctor. Here we go. Okay. So. Good evening, Dr. Keisha. I'm mute you here. How you doing? I'm well. I'm well. How's everyone? Doing well, thank you. So, um, all righty then. So, just so Eric knows, this is a, a little bit about what we do. The first thing we do is I usually go through a couple of articles that I found that's pretty interesting, and I let the panelists kind of chime in and give their perspectives. And then the second thing I want to do is talk about uh, our conference that's coming up as well as our consulting company that we're starting and have Dr. Keisha and Ron talk about the school that we are starting. And then the third thing that we're going to do is interview you, Eric, and um, my pan co-panelists will also ask you questions as well in terms of, you know, what your experience are in the blockchain space and, and all of that and, and the emerging trends that you're seeing. And this group is really about how do we capitalize as consultant in this industry with varied backgrounds, whether we study education or human resources or law. You know, there's a lot of different um, professionals that are making money in the blockchain space, and we just want to get a piece of that pie. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to share my screen and go to my first article here. Let's see. And the first article that I found is... Uh, Title is from TechCrunch. Uh, with at least 1.3 billion invested globally in 2018, venture capital funding for blockchain blows past 2017 totals. So, Eric, there's a guy that a lot of us follow named Mark Moss as well. And Mark has been talking about the fact that trillions of dollars are flowing into crypto and into blockchain projects in order to build the infrastructure from old money to new money. And this is a lot of what we're seeing. Um, so the author says here, although Bitcoin and blockchain technology may not take up quite as much mental bandwidth for the general public as it did just a few months ago, companies in the space continue to rake in capital from investors. One of the latest to do so, and I'm going to put you on mute, um, I, somebody, there's a bad echo there. Um, so one of the latest to do so is Circle, which recently announced a $110 million Series E round led by Bitcoin mining hardware manufacturer Bitman. Other participating investors include Tusk Ventures, Pantera, IDG, General Catalyst, Excel, Digital Currency Group, Blockchain Capital, and Briar Capital. Uh, the round vaults circle into an exclusive club of crypto companies that are valued at more than a billion dollars in their most recent venture capital round. So one of the things that's happening here is not every company is doing an ICO. There are a lot of companies that are just going straight to venture capitalists and getting venture capital money. And this directly relates to our um, 
our consulting company, Blockchain Consortium International, and how we're saying that we want to be able to get a monthly retainer from these companies as well as equity. So this is this is where the funding comes from for these companies to be able to pay us, either individually or collectively. Um, let's see here. Back in February, Crunchbase News predicted that the amount of money raised in old school venture capital rounds by blockchain and blockchain adjacent startups in 2018 would surpass that amount in 2017. Well, it's only May, and it looks like the prediction panned out. So here's the chart that they have uh, where they show um, the amount of money that's been raised, which uh, is $1.2 billion for a little over 200 um, companies. And this, like I said, excludes ICOs. So ICOs have raised, uh, I think $5 billion was what we saw last week. Um, but this is another $1.2 billion that is outside of the ICO market. So I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to bring in my panelists here. And what do you guys think? Either one of you, what do you think about this? You know, we're poised to, to get right in on this um, uh, exponential um, trend as it's going straight up. Um, I'm excited to, to see that uh, institutions are getting involved, in which case, that lets me know that you know there's space for us for sure right absolutely um, um, those would not be people who are you know and um, uh, profitability yeah so I'm gonna put my lawyer hat for a second um, most of the people that come to approach me on blockchain uh, are doing ICOs mm -hmm. what they are learning though is that as prior when the 16, 15 whole frame, the SEC wasn't involved. The SEC is deep in it right now. You have to mm -hmm. do Reg A or Reg B. Yeah. And that means that you have to get an attorney with SEC experience that is filing for you. Mm -hmm. And the learning that costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. military, actually, now they are charging out the wazoo because they see all these companies that can bring in seven, fifteen million dollars in the in the ICO funding, they get what, you know, twenty, thirty, forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Now lawyers are beginning to charge more for uh, their service to bring them into SEC compliance. So my advice is, if you're going to do an ICO, find a law firm that is going to charge you a reasonable fee and not break you over the coals because it's a hot topic right now, and one that has prior SEC experience. Right. And we were, uh, there were a couple of members and I that went to a conference last week and one of the uh, lawyers and I think it was a law firm, not the accounting firm, also talked about the fact that ICO money is taxable, whereas the VC money is not. So uh, in other words, the ICO money is taxable at 40 to 50 percent of what's raised. So if a company raises ten million dollars, you know, uh, four million of it to five million could go out in taxes depending on how they have it structured. So um, whereas if they raise the money from VCs, they get to keep the full ten million dollars to do, uh, you know, have operations and operational money. Right, so I mean, the, go ahead. There are pros and cons of both, clearly. Mm -hmm. I mean, VC, you're going to be giving up a whole lot of equity in your uh, your company to get VC money, as opposed to ICO. Um, you're basically they're an investor, but they're not like as active as a venture capitalist. So mm -hmm. you have to really weigh your options either way. I mean, right now, the best bet if you can do it now is to find, like I said, a, a reasonable attorney. Like I work with the Cogent Law Group in DC. And they're one of the reasonable ones. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that they don't charge an arm and a leg for uh, um, uh, an ICO, uh, you know, pretty good work. So find someone you're comfortable with, find someone that's, that's credible, that has the experience, and, and you'll do okay. Okay. And somebody is asking you to speak up, Eric, as well. 
So, uh, <laughs> and we seem to be having a little feedback too. So I don't know what's happening, but it, it, it'll be fine. Um, so, so I think it's important for us to look at the macro environment and just make sure that we're staying on top of it and staying on top of the trends and what's happening. Um, a lot of our people I saw, I was watching this YouTube video earlier today and it wasn't even about crypto, it was about the, believe it or not, the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. And people were talking about crypto and how crypto is a scam. And we have a lot of people in our community that are very leery of crypto. And I'm not, you know, I'm not grouping in the scam with Tulsa Real Estate, please don't take that. I just, I'm mentioning some of the comments that I saw. Um, based on you know the analysis that you know people are lumping in crypto with everything is a scam here but the truth is if jp morgan chase and these other big companies are getting involved um there's something that's really happening here um so the government isn't going to shut it down they'll they'll regulate it but they're not going to shut it down too much money in there so um so Rebecca's asking, what is the ICO for? Eric, do you want to, uh, to answer that? Sure. The, the best way I've uh, described the ICO is that it's, a, it's a, a sister or a cousin to the IPO. So when you open up a company and you want to raise money, you could sell stuff stock in the company, which is the initial public offering, and that's how you can raise money. Well, the coin is the stock version of the funding for a cryptocurrency or blockchain company. So if you know what an IPO is, you basically know what an ICO is, it's just the fact that they're using coin as the medium to raise capital, not, um, not, not stocks. Mm -hmm. So they would, they, they pitch their, their, they do a white paper, they pitch to investors, and they set a price based on you know market conditions, and then the investors can decide if they want to, to invest in the uh, uh, the cryptocurrency, well, the the company, and not via the coin, the cryptocurrency, or the coin that comes. One of my clients right now, they're doing a first round of an ICO at ten cents, and they're scheduling to do a ten cent well doubling it every other month. Mm -hmm. So by seven months, it'll be at about a uh, uh, dollar or so. Uh, and if that works for them, then whoever came in at 10 cents is gonna do extremely well. Uh, I had not fully vetted the company yet, so I'm not ready to endorse it, but I will say that that's probably one of the more creative ways I've heard of a ICO take, take place, because usually they don't double it every month usually they just wait for supply demand to become part of their financing process and when the first round ends they'll reprice it and do a second round mm -hmm. so if you want to take a chance getting it in a sense very lucrative question yeah so it depends on the project itself and you know what the target market is and where they are in the beta process and all of that. So, uh, so Rebecca clarified for me, she wasn't asking what an ICO was, even though it was good for us to talk about that for those who don't know. She's asking, is, is Black Blockchain Consulting launching an ICO? The answer oh. is no. Um, we are launching a consulting company, which I will talk about a little bit later on, probably in the next few minutes. And we're going to help companies that are doing ICOs or even companies that aren't, that are going the VC route. And I'll explain what we're doing um, for, for you who are interested in potentially being a part of that. Um, Gilbert is asking if you're able to provide the name of the company that you were just talking about so that he can vet the company for himself. Um, right now, I'm, I'm bound by a 20 client. But okay. I do, I'll be going to, it's in Dallas, I'll be going to Dallas um, in mid-July and I'll be leading a, so, so let me give me back up. Remember you, how you said how you can make money during this? Mm -hmm. so as an attorney, as, an, as a trainer, as an author and as a person that has created boards, 
Um, one of the ways I am making money with this client is that there's two ways. One, when they do their ICO phase, one thing that companies do is that they, they do all this funding and they raise all this money and it's like, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. so what I advise them to do is to create a strategic plan so that after they raise the money, they know what departments will need it for what, how do they invest it, what are the percentages and so forth. And I said, we need to set aside all the leaders for an entire day and have that discussion in the room where there's no interruptions, there's no phone calls, there's, there's, no, there's no one you know, coming in to say, I need this meeting to take place. We are sequestering, I am sequestering them for an entire day. Okay. That's the first piece. And the second piece is they want to create a board of directors but a board of directors has a very specific a, a skill set and b requirements like bylaws and conflict of interest statements confidentiality statements etc so i'm creating their board of directors for them so the one way i'm capitalizing on the blockchain is with my innate knowledge as an attorney and mm -hmm. so there's nothing really special that, that i'm doing that's different i just know how it operates. So I'm taking that knowledge about blockchain, partnering it with my legal knowledge, and clients are, are using that to their benefit. Great, great. Well, then that leads us into what we're doing in our consulting company, which goes directly to what you were saying, with these companies get all this money and then they don't know what to do next. So I'm going to jump over to our, um, let's see here. So my quick commercial here, it's not going to take too long. Just talk about what Black Blockchain Consultants is, what we're doing, et cetera. We are a peer-to-peer -peer group. We are here to take advantage economically of the $3.1 trillion industry. And this is our general meeting that is open to the public. So whether you're watching on Facebook or in our Zoom meeting, of course, we want to welcome you here tonight. Um, what we do within Black Blockchain Consultants is we have something called the Inner Circle, where we take different courses, whether it's a certified blockchain expert, which Dr. Keisha and Ron are working on creating a certified blockchain consultant class um, that should be launched at the end of July with our school. But we can also learn about smart contracts. We have somebody that's going to teach us how to write technical statements of work, things like that. So if you're looking for a career change, this could be a great opportunity for you to be a part of the inner circle. We also have study groups of people that are doing things like reading various white papers to become better uh, white paper writers, all the way to people who are studying Python. And then the third thing that we do is apprenticeships and consulting in order to get real world experience. And our goal over the next five years is to have 10,000 consultants worldwide making at least 150,000 a year, which is the top, what is it, 10% in the nation of, of earners. So we want to be above average earners. So someone asked, what's our consulting company? It's called Blockchain Consortium International. And what we're doing is exactly what Eric was talking about in terms of there are a lot of companies that raise money and then they say, what do we do? And there are a lot of blockchain entrepreneurs that are great coders, but they don't know how to build a business. And what we do is we are, because we're mostly non-techpreneurs or non-tech entrepreneurs, we focus on letting that business owner do what they do best, which is building the best blockchain project possible. And then we build the business around them. Everything from the ICO consulting, writing of the white paper, fundraising, HR, branding, marketing, sales, accounting, operations, legal, you name it. We basically build that $100 million plus business around that business owner. And in exchange for that, we get fees for service, but we also ask for equity in the deal based on how well we do so that when that business owner cashes out and we make them wealthy, they help make us wealthy. So that's, that's the deal with Blockchain Consortium International. 
And if you want to be a part of that, you first got to be a part of the inner circle, which is just $99 for the year to be a part of. Um, but Tawana Rivers right now is our chief people officer, and she and I are working on, um, on onboarding consultants through the end of the month. And then we're going to see where we are. So uh, if that's not your flavor, but you're really into teaching, then we also have the Center for Blockchain Studies. We have school. I'm looking right now, I'm working with a gentleman who's going to help me get some government training uh, contracts as well as corporate training projects as well. So um, we are also having our conference. And that is going to be on November 2nd and 3rd in Baltimore, Maryland. It's $99 for both days. It's going to be really, really good. November 2nd is all about being a consultant and taking people from concept to ICO to break even where they're starting to make money to profitable to cashing out, whether they're acquired or they do an IPO or something else in order to cash out. So we have, we had 70 seats available. Last time I looked, half of them were already taken, but you can go to uh, blackwealthandblockchain.com in order to get your tickets for, you can get it for Saturday or you can get it for Friday and Saturday. Uh, Saturday is gonna be our main event. Um, we're gonna talk about everything from blockchain and crypto to meeting successful blockchain consultants. Eric hopefully will be there as one of our consultants that people can meet and uh, get to hear his story and a lot more about what he's doing, taking his skills and converting them to blockchain companies. We're also going to have Blockchain Investor Group International or Biggie come and talk about investing in blockchain projects. Even if they're not investing in an ICO, if someone comes to you, I get people coming to me now all the time saying, Cherie, will BBC partner with us? Or will BCI partner with us? You probably gonna have people doing the same thing to you. How do you know that this is a blockchain project you really wanna be a part of? That is gonna be a part of what Biggie is talking about as well as what this day is. And then of course, we're gonna talk about our use case roundtables. Healthcare, FinTech, HR, entertainment, social justice. We have like 15 or 16 different roundtables um, that we're going to have. Sessions one through three will be streamed, but the rest will not. So a part of being in the building is the networking that's going to happen, um, the deals that are gonna be made, and you know the opportunities that are gonna arise. Um, so it's blackwealthandblockchain.com. If you want to come, you can either come to just Saturday or you can come to Friday and Saturday. And if you're coming um, on both days or if you need a hotel room, we have also blocked some rooms with the hotel. Um, so with that, oh, now somebody's saying my mic is too loud. Um, <laughs> I was trying to level out Eric and I, so I apologize. Um, so uh, Rebecca's asking, how can we pay the annual fee? If you uh, email me at info at blackblockchainconsultants.com and say, I'm interested in being part of the inner circle, I will send you all of that information. And uh, any other questions that people have before we jump into our interview, uh, official interview with, with Eric here? Dr. Keisha, you have anything you want to say about anything before we jump in? Um, I just really wanted to say I, I, I'm excited about how we have a real life case uh, in, in Eric here, um, where, where he's admittedly saying that he's using his existing skills, which is what we all were um, you know, very comfortable with, but we just needed to learn what blockchain was. So. That's what we've been doing. And I, and I gotta say, like you mentioned earlier, I, I spent last week with, uh, in Detroit with the um, tech startups. I went to the different um, sex, uh, sessions that were about blockchain and I just felt so good that I understood what they were talking about. Yes. You know, <laughs> so, uh, you know, with, and like you're saying, Eric, with me understanding that I have 25 years of teaching experience um, and now I, I can just, segue that right into 
you know, this new space. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that we are all coming together here and that we have a lot of rich um, experience right in our in our group, really. Um, like you were just saying, maybe we could find that attorney. I think we may have some attorneys right in our group we to do. tell you the truth, you know, who are learning blockchain and would really be able to make that that um, that bridge, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, but I'm sure Tawana will be recruiting a couple of more. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sure. 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 Yes. Yeah. So um, let's see here. I see another question. Are there any requirements to join BBC? No, Gilbert. There are no requirements except that you are willing to do the work and you can either take the certified blockchain expert course, which is part of blockchain-council.org or you can wait until August when Dr. Keisha and Ron and the rest of the crew releases the certified blockchain consultant. And actually we're going to ask everyone to take that course as well. So, you know, all of us can have that course under our belts um, as well and put the, put it on LinkedIn, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, so that, that is all that's required. And, uh, uh, Ron Clement, if you can let me know if you want to be invited into the panel, I will do that. Um, so Corey's asking, do you have to complete the Python course to remain in BBC? No, you do not. I'm a Python dropout. <laughs> and it's not, so I will admit, it's not because I couldn't do it. I just didn't have the time. And the truth is after learning about the white paper 2.0, I do that with my business plans anyway. So I kind of feel like there's some things I just, I, I can take my current skills and move them over uh, to the blockchain project. So, um, but if people want to learn Python, if people want to learn Solidity and smart contracts, I definitely suggest you do that because you will be in very high demand if you know how to code. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Corey is saying, LOL, me too. That's funny. Um, <laughs> Proud dropouts. <laughs> yes, we are, we are dropouts. So uh, we're, we're like uh, Kanye around here. So. <laughs> so with that, Eric, we want to respect your time and everyone else's too. So why don't we take a step back? Because you really didn't get a chance to introduce yourself. Um, so, uh, you know, just tell us who you are, a little bit about you and um, how you got interested in the blockchain. Oh, you're on mute. Oh, maybe I need to take you off mute. Yeah, okay. Okay, so good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Guthrie. Uh, I live in the DC area, and, and uh, I have a, uh, a note from a Spelman sister here that we went to uh, Morehouse Spelman together. I'm a Morehouse graduate. So hello to my spell, my sister from the great, great 88. It's a small world, <laughs> when you get this high up, it's a very small world. Um, <laughs> I'm also an author. I wrote a book called Diversify or Die. And I wrote that two years ago. What's about diversity and inclusion? And that will play into this conversation in a minute. Um, I got into blockchain uh, about two years ago. I was at a retirement luncheon and I heard about Bitcoin before, but this young guy was talking about Bitcoin. And I was like, Man, that sounds like something I've heard of before. So after the luncheon, I went, went online, researched it, and I, I was hooked from like the fourth or fifth article. And I stayed up for almost three days straight, just reading, reading, reading about crypto, 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 blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. So after that, I knew I was going to invest. I just didn't know how. I had to research the, the trading platforms. I had to research uh, the wallets, had to research which one I wanted to use. And I traded stocks and futures and commodities before, so I was comfortable with risky investments, but this was really going gangbusters back then. So I paper traded for uh, about a week or so, and which I explained in my book. By the way, I'm writing a book about cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Um, and I'm writing a book because when I do book signs for Diversify or Die, mm -hmm. almost nobody, none of our people knew about cryptocurrencies and blockchain. When I, when I asked about it, I think I had five people raise their hands in about a year. Wow. And that was, that was so disappointing to me that this was going gangbusters and we weren't in. 
Mm -hmm. and the summer times in the past, we came in at the tail end of something, which means that the money was already been made. Yeah. People have already made their fortunes. And yep. now we are fighting over crumbs when the big pieces of the pie have already been cut. So at the end of the, uh, the, the book signings, they were asked me, is this information in this book? And I had to say, no, it's not. It's not about cryptocurrencies or blockchain. This is about diversity and inclusion. So many folks asked me about it. I said, you know what? I have to write a book about this for our community. And I'm almost done. It's taken me about six months or so to write it. Well, actually now about seven to eight months. Um, but it's almost done. And I'm trying to get it released in time for Congressional Black Caucus, which is when I released my book, Diversify or Die, two years ago. Okay. So that's an example of how, in addition to my legal skills, being an author, doing the research, doing the presentations, uh, of, you know, going on a speaking circuit has allowed me to become more involved in sharing my expertise with our community because that's something that we, we desperately need. If, if we can get on the forefront of this, we're still probably at the tail end of the early adopter phase. Mm -hmm. But there's still enough time for us to get engaged in this and become the experts, become the, the consultants, to become the trainers, the attorneys that have the expertise where we can really become part of the people that get the benefit of some blockchain. You know, and speaking Absolutely. of Morocco's government, I want to, I'm starting an HBCU initiative to try and educate the kids in these schools on being blockchain experts. Mm -hmm. While they're in school, because what do we want here? We can't find qualified applicants. Not if we have anything to do about this. I want to get HBCUs, as many as I can, in on the blockchain. Yeah. Which means that we can, we become what, blockchain professors now. We can teach our kids when we know about it. We can go back to our schools and teach our kids about blockchain. So when they graduate, there's no more we can't find qualified applicants. The issue is which HBC do I go to to find someone that's going to do this for my company? Yeah. I was speaking with a gentleman that was recruiting for a Fortune 500 company. And he said to me, Cherie, if you were to present me with a black female HBCU graduate, like, because it was um, in May, uh, that that knows how to code, I would hire her today. Like they were desperate for a black female who knew how to code. And I was laughing because I said, I, I bet you if she walked in and said, I want the same salary as the white males are getting, she would have gotten it. I would have coached her <laughs> to get it. You know? <laughs> Whatever you're paying them, that's what I want to get. You know, so um, so yeah. I mean, there are now. One of the things that that we have talked about is getting the HBCU professors involved, and you know the the generation gap there sometimes, where the professors and the administrators always seem to either they're you know they're thinking about how do I survive the next semester, and they're not thinking long term. Or they just are so overwhelmed that they can't really um, can't really tackle anything else. Are you talking when you say being a, a professor? Are you talking about just setting up some sort of boot camps for the the young people and and having them come out you know outside of the official school channels? Or have you given any, given any thought to that? I don't want to put you on the spot. No, I have the answer, and the answer is there's one thing that every HBCU needs, and that's money. Mm -hmm. money money, 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 and more money. So what I want to do is partner with uh, organizations uh, like Government Blockchain, which I'm, I'm director of training for Government Blockchain, and other organizations that are willing to say, listen, you know, we'll help you create the alliances with companies that are looking for these applicants from your school and create that pipeline. And once I see that pipeline and maybe research dollars coming into the institution, they have no choice if they have any sense but to say, yes, we will do this. Yes, we will engage in blockchain. We, we may not understand it, but we understand two things. One, it is technology for the future. And two, it could benefit our institution. Yeah, I have some comments to say, but I'm not gonna say them on the recording here. So you and I will have to circle back on some of the other pushback that you uh, might get from that. So you're just prepared. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I know that there's going to be a pushback, and you know, 
there's 101 HBCUs out there. If mm -hmm. I can get 10 in on this program, I'll be very happy. Well, you know what? You've got Dr. Keisha here. You've got Ron, who is also works for a Fortune 500 company as a trainer. You don't mm -hmm. lack trainers in this group. Like when this thing is ready to pop, you yeah. can tell them, look, we've got at least 30, 40 people who are ready to come and train day one in, in various aspects of either technology or the business side of it. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> And, and I wanted to add to um, Sheree what you were just saying, and and you, Eric, um, truly the the kind of pushback that you're really experiencing uh, when we, when we're talking about education is because this is so new, um, and and the, the the gears in education just grind so slowly, um, and even though intellectually the professors and such may really understand what you're talking about. Sheree, you hit it. You hit the, the nail on the head. They're, within the traditional structure, it's just there's just so much that they're accountable for at this point that that's just too new, too much um, to even, you know, try to, to retrofit into a traditional system. So um, it's wonderful that we have our school coming and there are programs that you can go to and we are, we're collaborating like this because that that's really what will be needed. You know, trying to fit the square peg in the round hole kind of thing. Yeah. It, it's going to be, a, we, will, we will receive pushback. Yeah. But intellectually, people will understand that, yeah, this is what's next. Yeah. But it's just it's tough to make the bridge. Well, fortunately, there are some schools like MIT. They've already begun to incorporate blockchain into yeah. not only their education, they're putting their diplomas, their degrees on the on the chart chain, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. so well, I, I was thinking more at, on the lines of what you were saying. Us, you yeah. know, <laughs> you, yeah. not the MITs and the yeah. Stanford that just created the Center for Blockchain Research. Yeah, Correct. we get that. <laughs> but Lisa, Lisa is, is agreeing as well, and she also works for an institution. So. Um, so she's saying most likely it'll have to be off curriculums, but there are ways for us to do it where we are touching the students directly if you're talking about speed to market. Um, so, uh, but you never know. You never know. So, um, so Ron, I see you're unmuted here. Did you have something you want to say? Yeah, I, I wanted to add, I, you know, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying about the pipeline, uh, Eric. Um, we are talking about the pipeline with HBCUs. And I think that's something that we, you know, are gonna look at at some point, you know, having say a database or a resume database of skills so that when companies are looking, you know, we have the skills database here. We have these skills within our organization. And the same kind of thing you were talking about with the, um, you know, for the students, you know, I think that's, that's an excellent idea. Yeah. So um, how, so you, you talked to us, Eric, about how you first heard about blockchain and some of the things that you're doing. Um, what exactly are you doing with GBA? I heard you say you're their director of training. First of all, how'd you get that? Uh, and then what do you see yourself doing with that title? So excellent question. Um, I found GBA through a meetup. I went to the meetup and um, one of the presenters, Mike Bombas, who was the current and still the, um, the general counsel, uh, he did a great presentation. So after I talked to him and I asked him what kind of opportunities did they have in the organization, and he told me, we exchanged information and we had a couple of phone calls. Well, the thing about blockchain, which is unlike the tech bubble in the 90s and, and other um, like you know, big, Fads that have come and gone. Blockchain is really built on community. I mean, the initial Bitcoin was a community effort first. It was people volunteering their time and their efforts, their coding experience, their business experience, their marketing experience. They weren't getting paid. They were building this from the ground up. And I like in the blockchain, even now, in some circles, to that type of effort. So I just said, listen, I'm willing to help. I'll volunteer my time. And I said, I have experience in training and in legal. Well, they said they needed training desperately. So I met with the CEO. We actually, I had a meeting with him that ended up being like four other people at the same time. They all were so excited about me volunteering. Mm -hmm. They joined in the meeting. Next thing they're like, listen, if you want to be a director, it's yours. 
So I said, well, listen, let me not, let me, let's, let's not be too hasty here. Let me see what you need and so on and so forth. So I assessed it and I determined that my skill set would be well served for them. And they have a five day training that they just kind of put together. And I, I broke it apart and I said, guys, we need to totally redo this. So I, I redid the training once and now we're doing it again. And now we're offering more robust platforms where we're doing a two day training. If you can test into it, we're looking at doing online training as well. Um, and we do it globally. GBA has 8,000 members, mm -hmm. and has around six to nine chapters across the world. So it's That's great. Global, yeah, it's truly a global organization. We've and it's not that old. My understanding is like, what, a year and a half, something like that? Yeah, it, it's, it's, not even, it's, it's not even two years old yet. It's yeah. But, but the, 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 the sheer passion and, and it's right now, it's a 501c6. So almost no one's, I mean, a few folks are getting paid like tech people and a few admin folks, but you know, people like me, I'm not even getting paid yet. Uh, the CEO, they're not getting, he's not getting paid yet. Um, we're doing this because of our passion for, for Bitcoin, but for blockchain, but I will say this, the two clients that I have so far, I got from GBA. And the volunteering, pays off okay the 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 uh, law firm that i will probably end up being of counsel for i met through gba so the question is when this is what i say to people when they say what's in it for me if i go to the meeting i said no no no. you ask what you can do for them mm -hmm. and it will pay off for you if you follow through with your commitments and your expertise and your skills if you go there saying what's in it for me you're gonna walk away with far less than you can walk away with if you say, what can I do for you? Right. And somebody asked, what does GBA mean? It stands for Government Blockchain Association. Yeah. So if you are interested in, so I've been to three meetups now and they um, relate different projects and things like that to how governments can use mm -hmm. those projects. But even if you aren't interested in government, you can go and just hear, you know, different projects that are happening or different um, applications that are happening and think about how it relates to your company or your industry, you know, et cetera. So um, the other thing that I will say, which is very interesting, is the, the fact that you got these two clients from meetups and the fact that we are seeing all of these conferences that cost 2000 3000 $5,000, $8,000, yet Eric got two clients from going to a meet up, okay? I think if we went to the DC one, it's free, <laughs> um, you know, so, or I paid $300, $350, something like that for my membership, even, you know, I would have paid anyway. Um, but I think going to the meetup doesn't even cost anything. So, yeah, so, you know, you don't have to have huge amounts of money in order to uh, make a return on investment as long as people see that you are active and you know what you're talking about. Go ahead, Dr. Keisha. I, I was just gonna say, but the, the thing that made it valuable is what he was sharing with, when he, that whole piece about what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't just go to these things just to be going, you know, we go to make some connections to, to network. Um, cause cause it, we get kind of, we think, you know, being in our little group, that we're in we feel like everybody knows what we're you know what we're talking about I mean, I, you may have kind of felt like that once you were reading you know like you were saying eric you were reading and reading you feel like man i'm on the back end of this i know i can just talk to anybody about this and then you realize that yeah no <laughs> you know that tribe is pretty small you know so yeah so to get together and really let people know what you're up to and then let you let that you're willing to work i am sure that will that gives you the payout that, that yeah. you're talking about that's that's exciting to know yeah, thank you I me mean, it already has paid off that's what i'm that's what i'm saying i'm gonna be sure to do just that yeah because i want to help so where do you see blockchain going in the next few years what years you you're, probably have access to some information that we don't necessarily have on the mainstream or you're just hearing things from different clients what are you uh seeing and forecasting well so here's two here's two examples that i give in my book and when i give when i speak so right now everyone uses uber and everyone uses uh airbnb 
well, I would say everyone, but the vast majority of us do. Well, there are already blockchain Ubers and blockchain Airbnbs that are already in their their beta phase. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them, I think the Uber is called Lazoo's. And basically, if, if there's an open seat, it will route you through the blockchain to the open seat. And then everything is done on the blockchain. There's no app. Well, there's no app that holds your credit card. I'll correct that. Mm-hmm. So everything is decentralized. There's no central company. It's all on the blockchain. And there's a there's a, a Airbnb for um, for uh, for blockchain. Actually, there's two of them. So all these companies that were huge disruptors, you know, seven eight years ago, are now being disrupted again by the blockchain. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll be able to with the blockchain track a, a item of food from the farm to the supermarket. So you know where it came from, how old it is, how good it is. You know, you'll be able to send money overseas to your relatives uh, and and have it cost one percent rather than paying the Western Union seven, eight, nine, or ten percent, depending on uh, the country you're sending it to. So the, the, the blockchain is going to get rid of so many intermediaries. And the one thing I tell a lot of our people is if you're an intermediary, you need to pay attention to this because you may become obsolete. Yes. And unfortunately, a lot of us are in intermediary types of uh, industries. Yeah. Yeah. I've been preaching that as well, that a lot of our people are going to lose their jobs. But one thing that I believe, and I've said this to my group several times, is that there are some people that aren't going to believe us now, but in two, three years when this happens, we just got to be that light shining saying, okay, we'll help you transition. No, I told you so, no any of that. It's just, okay, you know, we know that you're excited because you just lost your job and you just maybe lost your pension or whatever, but let's transition you using the skills you have. So, you know, part of what you're doing, the same thing as well, is, is let's retrain you just a little bit so that you can, um, you can, you know, get another job within a blockchain company or, you know, whatever the next step is for people. So I think that's very important. I want to say, uh, Raymond, I see your hand up. If you mean to have your hand up, put something in the chat for me. Okay, you lowered it. All right. Um, <laughs> I've learned my lesson to not just bring people in. <laughs> so uh, Corey is saying here that he got a ton of healthcare and consulting skills with this MBA. Great, Corey. Um, Caress is asking, Eric, do you anticipate the GBA certification courses that are currently offered as live courses in various cities will become available as online courses? If so, do you know how soon? Excellent question. And right now the answer is not going to be in 2018. Um, the, The challenge of creating an online course, there's a few of them, but one of the major ones is Providing in a way we don't lose quality without having the instructor attendee interface. Mm -hmm. And that's the first challenge. The second challenge is choosing that platform that works the best for you. So because this is such a complicated technology, we have to probably choose one of the most robust platforms we can to have it be effective, which is going to cost a lot of money. We're discovering that now. Exactly. That's why they're laughing because literally they're sending like the bills. Like, Sharif, what's our budget? And I'm like, oh my God. I know. <laughs> yeah. I was, that was going to be my question to you, Eric. What, are you, what platform are you using now? <laughs> we, we don't even have, that's not even on my radar screen just yet. Look, and then here's why because we're trying to create a, 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 a licensing platform where we're going to stop doing the training hopefully by the end of the year and license people across the world to do it and they pay us a royalty for being yes yes that's what we, talk, we got to that's what we, talk, we were talking yeah we were talking about the same thing so yeah, yeah. that's the way my company does it, it exactly that's right the where they do it it's almost like the mcdonald's of training right yeah. rather than open up your your own burger shop all over the place 
Yeah. Franchise and it out and get a portion of royalties back. Yeah. And then making unbelievable money. Yeah. Unbelievable. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We're all on the same page here, so. Uh. Uh, <laughs> yes, all righty then. So uh, other questions, uh, Ron or Dr. Keisha, do you have questions for Eric or anybody in the audience? If you have questions for Eric, let us know. Well, I, I want to know, can we make sure we work with Eric in some way? Can you be our counsel or something? Because we, we, are, we are like absolutely like right where you're talking about. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm already in. We're just going to uh, figure excellent. out you know, when and how. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, excellent. let's do that. Absolutely. Because we're, on the, we're right in the, on the same level with so many things. Wow. Yep. Right. And we probably can help you with some of the training that you want to do in terms of you know, licensing and dispersing your, your training as well. We have people all over, not only the country, but we have people overseas as well uh, in Europe and in Canada and places like that. So, yeah. And, and speaking of working together, so I'm actually working with uh, a few folks in Dallas about doing a diversity blockchain conference okay. in the winter of 2019. Okay. With the very same, my very similar intent to yours, which is to you know spread the word, uh, and and have various tracks, you know, healthcare. The MBA that talked about health, healthcare, healthcare is, is going to be major for blockchain. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the, the two clients I have are both healthcare, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I mean, and it's about. about Thirty to forty percent of healthcare companies are already figuring out how to implement the blockchain. Yeah, yeah, healthcare is going to be huge because it is about data and securing data, and then giving people their keys, giving people the power over their files, their medical files. So, Which yeah, is a similar we, application for business, for uh, education as well. Any mm-hmm. any any application where there's oh, there's tons of data, private information you know, records that you need to be able to exchange with other entities. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. Yeah. So, uh, Caress is saying she understood that's in regards to be, uh, the question that she asked earlier. And, uh, Victor is saying supply chain is also going to be huge for yeah. blockchain as well. Yeah. So he's been working on a supply chain thing that, uh, you know, and even cybersecurity, it has major applications yeah. in cybersecurity itself. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely. also. Mm-hmm. So, in fact, I wanted to show the article. I, I pulled up another article today about uh, the 51%, you know, hacking rule and, mm-hmm. and um, some of the, uh, we call it, the different um, opinions about that um, and some of the different hacks that have happened, but you know we don't have time to go over it, so we may do it next month. But security is huge, and that's one of the big things when I'm speaking with my mentor about the um, corporate enterprise side, it is about security and securing the data, uh, even on the, the private blockchains. So again, not everything is gonna be public. There are gonna be these private blockchains that all of these companies are gonna have um, they're, they're going to be instituting them now. So and, there are a lot Eric, of different ways to do that. Go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. Yeah, real quick, Eric, uh, you know, since you're in the training aspect also, you know, blockchain, as you know, is pretty secure. It's pretty secure within the blockchain. All the vulnerabilities and, and hot spots or wherever you come in mm-hmm. or go out of the blockchain for the most part. And a big piece of that from a training standpoint, where I think the most vulnerability lies is between the keyboard and the chair. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's where the training comes in. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. right between the yeah. keyboard yeah, and the I chair. Got See? I got you. Yeah. yeah okay. You know, the, yeah. The, the thing about it is, is that, you know, so like, for example, with the DAOs, the decentralized autonomous organizations, okay. right? And everyone says, it's going to be fully automated. It's going to be the company in the future and we won't need people anymore. And my answer is we will always need people. Always. And because we'll always need people, it'll always be that potential for flaw. That's right. Because, because really, when we look at it, sometimes we're the flaw in the system. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's but, right. But we'll and people have to understand that the more, yes, the, more, yeah, the more, 
the more complicated something becomes, the more at risk from a security standpoint you're going to be. Right. Because, because it's complicated and you're not going to keep up with this and that and that. And, right. Yeah. And then, you know, it's wide open. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why, and that's why the blockchain protocol has not been hacked. Every other platform, you know, like trading platforms, wireless, everything, but not the blockchain. Why? Because it's designed so simplistically right. that it just the following the blocks right. and building off each other. Right. In order for you to really have to hack mm -hmm. it, the, the, the amount of software you have to use quantum is, computing. And, and quantum use. computing. You want to just make money by doing it the, the correct way. Right. <laughs> That's right. So and you got to do it all at the same time. Yeah. So this article that I read said that that, you know, that works if you're talking about Bitcoin or Ethereum, but some of the, um, the less used altcoins or the ones that aren't as established, you know, the, the whole article was about how those are still susceptible to, uh, to hacking. But the hacking that I've seen is, you know, computer, uh, sorry, human error. Um, and they they hack the company. They don't necessarily hack the blockchain mm -hmm. you know, itself. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and that's why I'm careful to say the Bitcoin protocol, because you know, and I think the Bitcoin and the Ethereum are probably two of the more secure ones. Yeah. One of the reasons why that the other ones that maybe do like a two minute rather than a ten minute um, hashing is because the 10 minutes makes it much more difficult for a hacker to come in and do that versus two minutes, right? Okay. That, mean, that means that there's so much more data that has to be put in and hash and verified that you can, you can catch someone doing that if they're trying to versus two minutes, it comes in and it comes out much faster. So now you have what I always, this is the age old problem between accessibility and security. Mm -hmm the two are almost never gonna be in line. When you have greater accessibility, it means you have less security. Mm -hmm. And when you have greater security, you have less accessibility. Bitcoin was one of the few things, that protocol that found that delicate balance between the two of them, but a um, real teller is not gonna wait 10 minutes for a transaction to take place in order to get paid, right? So they're gonna find other ways to kind of make up for that, which may be some intermediaries that may bridge the gap in the meantime, but that's where the hacking may take place. Yeah. Oh, hold on, Ron. You gotta, I gotta unmute you here. Or you gotta unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, saying? right in that little spot. I'm just agreeing with you. That's kind of the way it's always been. In a lot of cases in security, there's always that little gap, mm -hmm. you know, like in wireless, they used to call it the gap in the WAP, which was wireless access protocol. <laughs> well, we got two more questions here. Oh, well, Caressa is saying the energy sector as well, huge disruption. I listened to a, a call probably about a week ago, uh, which I think I sent to everybody in regards to the energy sector and some of the things that's happening there. Um, there's a lot of money in alternative energy and the blockchain. So, um, and then Victor is saying um, quantum computing could pose a risk of hacking the blockchain. What does yeah. that mean? Huge processing power. Huge. Yeah. Oh, so, so, so they can hack. Okay, so he's saying quantum computing can hack the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Well, but who's got that kind of power? Right, right. <laughs> exactly. The Chinese? And can you do it at the same time? Can you hit all the spots simultaneously? That's the other thing. Uh, you, I think, I think governments might, you know. <laughs> Quantum computer, that's big. That's like supercomputer times 10. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, so quantum computing, um, I think it, it has a greater chance, but doesn't have, I think, um, I don't think it's a, a huge threat, but I think it's more of a threat than the average guy on a laptop or a PC. See, let me, let me just say this real quick. With all uh, computing and cryptography, everything can be broken at some point. At some point. The point is, how long will it take you? Right. Will the information still be valuable if it takes you 10 years to break it? Yeah. Nobody's going to care in 10 years, you know, what that meant, you know, what it was all about. That's the whole yeah. point. 
So quantum computing can do it faster, but still, you know, you got to do it all at the same time. You got to hit all the minings. We got to do everything at the same time, and that's pretty. And then blockchain, like you mentioned, has some security built in where you know that longest chain rule. And yep. So, yep. You know, and look, yeah. Yeah. And each block is connected with the public key and so forth. I totally agree. He's spot on. So let's uh, bring this to an end then. I'm going to let everybody go and just say one thing that, you know, you want the family to know. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Keisha. Any final comments? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just excited about the uh, partnership we, we're going to have with Eric. Um, mm -hmm. So am I. I feel like we yep. are, you know, right on. Um, I don't feel late. I don't feel late to the game. I feel like we're right, we're right on. We've met each other at just such a time as this. And. I'm excited. I'm, I'm absolutely excited. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Ron? And now I know this is not totally original, but I'll just say this. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, yes we can. I, miss, I miss that phrase. It's yes, like, we can. Oh, I <laughs> And hope, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh my yes, we can. Yeah, we, we can do this, definitely, and we can make a huge impact. Eric, final words? Well, thank you for having me. I had a great time. Uh, this may be the, the best time I had talking about blockchain ever because, you know, I, I don't get a chance to talk to People are excited, yeah. Us about this. I'm speaking at the Black... Um, Blessing Government Conference in New Orleans in August. I'm also speaking at the Black, um, well, it's the National Black Association, which is National Bar Association, which is the Black Bar in August as well. So I'll be speaking in front of two large audiences about this, and I'm curious to see how it's going to go because <laughs> when I speak to medium sized uh, audiences, there's a lot of pushback, and there's a lot of, a lot of fear, a lot of paranoia, and a lot of doubt. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of tailoring my presentation to uh, take an account for that, which I did not expect at first, but now I'm ready for it. So mm -hmm. being in front of a group like this, is, it's, it's heaven, it's wonderful, it's, it's yes we can do it. Uh, so thank you for having me. Uh, look out for my book uh, on uh, a cryptocurrency and the blockchain. May actually include, I'm including some organizations in the book, may even include your organization in the Love book it. to give you guys some yeah. Some, uh, some light, yeah. absolutely. Exactly, some exposure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'd love for you to come back when your book is done. We'll definitely support it, you know. So um, you and I definitely will uh, be in touch, you know. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, I just want to say, you know, a, a happy evening to everybody. And um, make sure that if you have not gotten your tickets yet, uh, it's blackwealthandblockchain.com, especially for that Friday, because if you're going to be one of our consultants, we really, really need you to be there on Friday so that we can walk through that whole process. That's that Friday, November 2nd. Tell your friends about November 3rd as well. And um, we are very close to having all the paperwork ready for the consultants that are coming on. So June 30th is the last day for now, um, that'll be the cutoff day for us to uh, begin accepting consultants. So get in flock and go to that Google Doc, and I'll post it in there uh, again, um, so that you know you can fill that out that information if you want to be one of our consultants. And other than that, I want to say God bless everybody and have a good evening. Take Thank care, everybody. You. Thank you. Bye. -bye.